So I've got my next wonderful guest here at the uh, Clinton uh, Global Initiatives here in uh, New York City as part of New York uh, Climate Week. Um, and just tell us uh, who you are and where are you from? So I'm Rudy Byfield. I am CEO and founder of Celebration Water, uh, which is the finest water you'll ever have, aren't you? Um, I founded the company back in 2018 and um, thrilled to be here to make a commitment to climate change and improving our behaviors overall. Okay. And you're uh, originally from uh, Jamaica? Um, yeah. Or you're still I, from Jamaica? <laughs> I grew up in Jamaica, high school in Jamaica, graduated high school in Jamaica, and then my parents shipped me off to, uh, to London mm -hmm. um, and um, uh, quite, learned quite a bit there. Then I went up to Columbia, Bogota, mm -hmm. the National University in Bogota, um, for some advanced studies as well, and uh, then back in Europe, and mm -hmm. then back to the U.S. to live. Okay, yeah. okay. So, um, just tell us a little bit about what what this this company is. What is it trying to do, uh, Rudy? So, you know, so the if you look back at our blueprints six years ago, the concept even then was always portable water in sustainable packaging, mm -hmm. right? At that time, we called it alternative packaging and um, didn't really want to put the water in a, in a plastic bottle. Mm -hmm. uh, we ended up doing that, but we now have the ability and the resource to pivot and curtail the production of water uh, in oil-based PET plastics mm -hmm. and transition over to more sustainable, renewable, environmentally friendly plant-based packaging. Aha, uh -huh. okay, right? yes. And we, we know already that you know, from the inception of our commitment through 2028, we stand to avoid about 160 plus tons, metric tons of plastics hitting landfills under our oceans. Okay, very interesting. And you may be aware that under the UN Environment Program last uh, March, the governments agreed to try and go ahead with uh, negotiating a new global treaty on plastics. So I think there'll be increasing pressure to, to, to get those out of the system because they don't really make any sense, yeah. Absolutely, absolutely. I mean, and for a guy now, I grew up in the Caribbean. There is no recycling system throughout the Caribbean. At least not that I know of, last time I checked. Uh, so we, we, we have to innovate and we have to come up with ways to mitigate the damage that's already been done and prevent ways from further accumulating more damage. I think the transition over to the plant-based packaging is, is a good, strong signal for a small company. Um, and I'm pretty sure other guys out there are doing it, other companies out there are doing it, but that's what it's going to take, right? In Jamaica, we, and I hope you get to go there soon, there's a saying, every little make a muckle, which is if everybody does a little bit, mm -hmm. then suddenly the problem isn't as surmount, insurmountable as it seems. Yeah, absolutely. So I, I was going to ask you what your commitment uh, is, uh, but you've just actually told me. So that's fantastic. <laughs> and the why. So that's good. We've covered that one. That's no, really good. Yes, yes. I'm just curious, on the, on the plant side, so are you getting it from um, what kind of plant-based materials are you using? Is it so, there, so there's paperboard. Yeah. Um, uh, so the, there are several layers of paper. Mm -hmm. And the cap is actually made of sugar cane. Aha, OK. Yes. Very smart. Yes. Yeah, and I mean, this is not my patent. This is, the, I, the credits go to, to Tetra Pak. But, you know, we, um, it's not, uh, it's not, the, the occurrence in, of water in this type of packaging is not that common. And so we've been on the, um, on the war path to get there for the last four years or so. And we are now at point of production with this. Super, super. And so we want to ask you more the broad question. I mean, I mean, climate change, if anybody doesn't know that there's something called climate change happening to our world right now, then they're obviously smoking something pretty strong, right? I mean, it's just unavoidable to see it. But the question is, is it solvable? And, and in your opinion, can we solve the climate crisis? You know, it's a heavily loaded question. Yeah. And while I'm not an authority on the subject, I think it would be misguided of us to, one, think it's not solvable. Mm -hmm. Because if that's our mindset, then we are more inclined to sit on our posterior and do nothing. Mm -hmm. And we can't not do anything. We have to do something um, or everything. And I think that on the one hand, that has to be the mindset, that it is solvable. 
In other words, we can do something about it and so get into gear. Number two, just adopt a mindset of we don't have time. Exactly. We don't have time. I have two daughters, seven and five, and we are already instilling in them how to recycle, how to protect their ecosystem from irreparable degradation. Mm -hmm. And we have to adopt that more broadly, and I think that many small businesses are doing so. Um, but it, it's going to take more than industry leaders and business leaders. And I think uh, a wide cross-section of the consumer base is, is ready for the shift. And, and so business leaders have to take, uh, take the, you know, the, the lead role in, in getting this thing on the way. Yeah, good. Well, we're certainly very optimistic. I think the, the level of um, uh, innovation that's happening right now, your company just being an example of it, is, is extraordinary. Uh, from the large corporations to startups and all kinds of things, people are trying to find solutions to these big challenges. So I think there is optimism there, yeah. Now, I'm going to interrupt you here because on We Don't Have Time, we give climate warnings to companies and people who are not doing the right thing, but we also like to give climate love to an individual or an organization that we feel is doing something special. And I wanted to ask you, is there anybody out there you want to give, and you can hold a little, that, that you want to give climate love to? Yes, yes. And there's so much behind this. So, Hannah Ewing. Hannah Ewing at One Tree Planted. Okay. And we'll be doing some interesting things with them to get us to and beyond, hopefully, the two million mark in terms of number of trees planted by 2028. Mm -hmm. So Hannah Ewing at One Tree Planted, much love. Fantastic. And is she US based or is she Caribbean based or is she? She is US based, but she is all over the globe. Okay. Okay. She's a, she's a trotter. Yes. Good. It's been absolutely wonderful to meet you. Thank you Thank so you. much. Uh, great success with the work you're doing. And uh, hopefully we can catch up again sometime in the future and see how it's, uh, it's been working out. I'd love to. Okay. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you okay. so much. Yep. Goodbye. Thank you. Bye.